Okay, and as you can see here, I got the other one back in the shop here. And I didn't video it. Uh, like Uncle Tony says, embrace the suck. Well, I embraced a whole lot of suck and pressure washed it all off. Uh, I ran out of engine or uh, oven cleaner, <laughs> so I still got some more to do. But it's like 30, 33 degrees outside, and pressure washing this. Uh, that was, yeah, it was freezing cold. You can tell it's a truck because it's got the governor on it. That's the old timey governor. Little two barrel Holly 94. But this is the other, this is actually the Y block I'm going to be running. Uh, one of the things I did notice when I was pressure washing, remember I told you that this has been rebuilt? It was back in the 70s though. There's a, the block, you can see, it's all been uh, machine shop primed. So, I see different colors here. And, yeah, here, I see little flakes of green, black, it should all be this color. It should be yellow. Um, the Ford Industrial was yellow. But there's no signs of it on the block. And it really got me to wondering just exactly what the heck this is. So I wanted to come over here and get a picture of those block numbers. Uh, let's see. And why Ford put them on upside down? I don't know. But I'm going to give you guys the dizzy here. Because I can look that on my computer when I go to edit it. And then I'll know what those numbers are. <laughs> if you're ever wondering it's things like that you can use your phone for so you don't have to stand on your head you can reach your phone down into an engine bay and snap a bunch of pictures take it up and ah, you got to take it off that stupid screen flip but take it off that and then you can turn it over and you can read the numbers that helps when you're looking for stuff like that anyway this is the 272 that was bored and stroked to a 312. I'm already noticing something right there. It's got smaller exhaust ports than the Mercury. Definitely smaller. So I'm anticipating those heads to be quite a bit different. Okay, here I am. I'm back. You can see I've I pulled the intake off of the uh, the little uh, 55 Y block here. This is the Ford. You can see here these intakes are a whole lot smaller than what was on that Merc. But these are in extremely good shape. See there's some of that casting I was telling you about. So this one I'll probably well if I wanted to get this one really hot I'd have to port and polish these ones. Well, you know, polish is a loose term. But there's definitely rough casting. There's another good sized one right, right there. I don't have my bore scope here, and I don't want to bore you with another bore scope video. But difference on the between the Ford and the Mercury, definitely intake size. These are tiny. And I do know that this is a truck motor too. 
So I was kind of anticipating this anyway. I'm not sure possibly the car has got uh, different heads on uh, intake size on it. But I wanted to show you that. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Huh. I shouldn't have been out there pressure washing in that cold. I think I'm starting to come down with a little. It ain't the COVID, but I, th I think I'm coming down with a little bit of a head cold. Things you do for Ford, right? <laughs> it doesn't matter any car. But that's where I'm at. Uh, I still got a whole bunch more that was hiding under there. And I'm going to finish tearing this down and uh, regasketing it. So, stay tuned for the next one. Uh, like I said, I just wanted to show you that real quick. The, the water port's even a little smaller. So everything on here is smaller than the mercury. Okay, yeah, I couldn't resist. I had to do it. I went ahead and pulled the valley cover and the valve cover off of this, uh, the 55. Let me, let me show you something. This is how she's supposed to look. <laughs> you can tell an engine that's been run. Uh, this is, I would have to say, probably in the early 80s. But look at that. No sludge. That, the detergent oils, modern oils that they're putting in them now. But this thing is just whistle clean. Look at it in there. I don't think I got to do anything to it. And I'm pretty sure that the story was correct. That this was a fresh rebuild. There we go. You see her down in there? Look how clean that is. Of course, got a little, little condensation water in there from where I pressure washed it. But that is just... I don't have to do anything to it. Oh, the light went out. Uh, I was going to show you in that timing chain. The timing chain looks new. And you can kind of tell the way that the oil is run in it by looking at the lines on it. This block had a, oh, what's that red paint? Machinist paint when they rebuild the motors. How well that really works. You can see how it just directs everything, makes a slick surface for the oil to run back on. So when you're rebuilding a motor, if you could still get this stuff and you, you want to take the time to clean it good enough to use it, that stuff is really, really works. You can see that trough there, the oil trough, clean, clean as day. Yep. I know for sure about all I got to do to this poor thing. Oh, this thing ain't poor. This thing's ready to run. Uh, I will show you some of the differences in it. Oh, on those uh, Mercury rockers, uh, I did see this. This is where they're different. On the Mercury, they're longer. I can see it plain as day here. This is the Ford, little shorty short, and Mercury's out here. And that's how they're getting the higher ratio. Because when this is longer, you know, it pushes farther down. So that is a definite difference. But this is all adjusted. These rockers feel beyond good. Of course, that's, a, that's the way they are. <laughs> they move that way. What I'm doing again is I'm checking for the what is that called? Trunnion? Uh, tolerances in there? They're tight. Everything in here is tight and beautiful looking. Um, about all I got to do is clean this thing up and throw some power to it and see what happens. I was going to pull the heads on it, but I think I'm going to leave them alone. I'm going to leave the heads on it, uh, 
I'll get a, and then just, I'll use everything in the gasket kit but the head gasket. Because everything I can see here, there is absolutely no signs of any kind of compression loss or anything like that through the, there's no water anywhere, no water in the oil, except for, like I said, that little condensation I knew was going to be there. So, yeah, I'm surprised. I think I got lucky. This, this engine here is definitely a runner. And, well, like I was saying, this one's going in the 58, just the driver one, the Fairlane, the actual club sedan Fairlane. The white 58, that's the one that's going to get a... Uh, that's the one I'm making into a gasser, so it'll it'll have a little more, a little more hoomph in that one. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. I I'm kind of speechless. This engine here is looking really good. So I think I'm gonna call it a night. Uh, button it back up so no dirt gets back in here, and I'm gonna go home and take some uh, night quill and uh, see if I can get over. Don't don't pressure wash in that kind of weather. It's just it's just nasty. That's beyond embracing the suck. That's being a sucker, <laughs> right? So anyway, keep that metal hot. Meantime, we'll see you on the next one.